Excitement in the kitchen. Say, let's see the excitement. All right. Just you come along with me and I'll show it to you. Welcome, I am Jonathan the Appliance Dude here at Curto's in Westchester County. High atop Mount Appliance here on Central Avenue in beautiful and bucolic Yonkers, New York. And um, again, today the topic, it's not appliances, it's grilling, searing, smoking, all things that I love to do. The weather is warm, summer has finally arrived. May, what a disaster. It felt like March throughout until the final week of May. I was still grilling and doing my thing, but under those gloomy, gloomy skies, it just didn't feel right. But it's hot outside today, folks, and I'm fired up, ready to talk to you about the Alfresco grill here, really the Alfresco outdoor culinary system. And I wanted to mention it again because I did something recently on it. I cooked a specific cut of beef that is very unique. Um, and it bears worth mentioning. Um, and what it did, aside from setting me back a lot of money for this cut of beef that I bought at my guy Minnie's in Bronxville, but it was all worth it, it was so good. Um, it bears mentioning because of the fact it showed how the al fresco on one grill you can actually cook. They actually have about 13 different ways to cook on this grill, but for this particular cook with this cut of beef, I went three different ways on it, and it will show you the flexibility, the versatility of the Alfresco system. It is completely mind-boggling, it's nuts, and it needs to be discussed. So let me tell you the story, what happened here. Right before Mother's Day, I visited my guy, Minnie, and he said to me, hey, Jonathan, heads up, okay? Um, I'm getting tomahawk steaks in. Tomahawk steaks, of course, massive piece of beef, long bone sticking out of it. Really, really incredible piece to look at and more so to eat. This, this cut, this tomahawk that I bought actually looked like it was cut from a Brachiosaurus, Jurassic period. Um, incredible, fed, and he's like, dude, you're not gonna eat this yourself, this is two to three people, blah, blah, blah. The cut of beef, which you've probably seen the photo of already, if not right now, was about three and a half inches tall, high, Mass, very well marbled. I mean, it was a prime cut. He told me this is what they have. This particular purveyor is send stuff over to Luger's. I don't know if that's true or not, but the bottom line is it was an incredible, incredible specimen. Definitely looked like it was cut from a dinosaur as opposed to some steer. But anyway, the way I approached this cook was that I knew that it was going to take a long time on the grill because of the thickness. So what I wanted to do, you know, if you've seen my other videos, that I have a love. This is my, 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 my girl over here, the solid fuel insert. Um, this is the apparatus that you use to cook with solid fuels, i.e. lump hardwood charcoal or wood chunks or chips. No, I don't play with the Kingsford stuff. Sorry, folks, no fillers wanted over here. Um, so what I did was I put in one piece, one or two pieces of hickory, Loaded the bottom with lump hardwood charcoal, Kamado Joe brand. It's organic, it's from Argentina, it burns clean, it burns long, it's beautiful. And the beauty of using that with the alfresco is that it ignites quickly. I was lit in seven minutes. I was at Embers shortly thereafter. It's a hell of a lot, hell of a lot quicker to light up than an egg, than a Kamado ceramic grill. Listen, I have much love for them. You can see plenty of other videos about that. But the ease, the convenience of lighting up the fuel with the alfresco with your gas is, I mean, that's, that's a major, major win over here. So within seven minutes, the gas was turned off. I had the solid fuel going. And shortly thereafter, I mean, I'm at over 1,000 degrees on this box. So what I did was um, got the grill going. Um, in the kitchen, I had already taken the dino slab out um, probably half an hour prior. I don't really believe so much in having things at room temperature before you throw them on the grill. There are differ differing uh, you know, theories about that. But I hit it with a very, very basic rub, okay? Um, coarse kosher salts, black pepper, and I 
Do, I did not use my coffee rub with this. I actually think I worked in a little, I cheated, I worked in a little Montreal steak rub. And uh, of course, a uh, base of olive oil as well. And gave it a good massage. Again, very, very well marbled piece of meat over here. Um, and I think I actually did a one coat of butter on it as well. I don't normally cook with butter. I know that the steakhouses make that pretty much normal practice. Um, I did it this time, but again, not, not, not my normal course of action. So what happened is I did not want to do a reverse sear with this. I, ha I have a tendency to blow things up when I do the reverse sear. So I put it on the 1,000 degrees plus solid fuel insert threw it on there. Yeah, the flames are coming out. There's a lot of fat on this, a lot of marbleization. I kept it on one side for about two and a half to three minutes. Got a really nice char. Threw the dino slab over on the other side. Again, two and a half to three minutes. And then what I did, I took it off with these thongs. Thongs? What am I thinking of? Tongs. Tongs. <laughs> I put, the, I put them down with the tongs on the middle burner, okay? So the middle burner was set at like medium, all right, using the normal alfresco cooking system with the ceramic briquettes over the gas U-shaped burner. We were at medium, and I hit the, I hit the dino slab, the tomahawk, at um, I believe it was seven minutes per side. So at that point, what I wanted to do was, I did the old Steve Reichlin poke test, um, it did feel a bit spongy still. I don't think I was at medium rare. I'm looking for 125 degrees. I injected my, um, I stuck it with my meat probe and uh, my instant read thermometer and I wasn't near 125. I was at like 100, 105, something along those lines. It was gonna be blood red inside. So I'm like, I said, let me leave it here for a couple of more minutes, did that. And I was looking at the bark on it, and you know, this did a very nice job from the get go of creating some sizzle, some bark, some caramelization on the top. But I said, you know what? I've used two of the three different burners on this grill. Let's light up, let's light up the Hellfire burner, i.e., the IR infrared sear burner, and let me finish off the sear with that. So I lit the Hellfire burner. This goes up. This is 1,000 or 1,100 degrees up to 1,600 degrees. It's the hottest IR burner out there. I got it to temperature in a couple of minutes. Threw the Dino Slab Tomahawk on there. One, one and a half minutes on one side. One, one and a half minutes on the other side. Pulled it off and it was time. And yes, I did use the thongs to pull them off. No, I did it again. The tongs, not the thongs. All right, I don't know where my mind is at. Um, <laughs> I, said, I do know where it's at, but um, pulled it off, put it off to the side, and I let it temp for about eh, five minutes or so. Cut into it, yowza! I mean, I had crazy bark, crazy crust caramelization on the top, beautiful redness inside, pretty much edge to edge. I nailed it. I was very surprised, but I nailed it. Um, so the, the alfresco completely just it, it kicked ass in this application. And it shows the versatility of the system, how on a 42-inch grill I can cook three different ways. I can sear with wood and lump hardwood charcoal, I can cook normally on a gas grill, and then I can sear infrared. That's only the beginning. I mean, the smoking, the uh, frying, the smoke tissing, the rotisserieing, I mean, it's just... This thing just packs such a wallop. I love this squirrel. I really, really do. I'm going to end it there. Check out the photos. There should be photos on the blog as well of what the cook was like. So please, again, hit me up if you have any questions. Please come to the show and visit. Check out the Alfresco display. It's the largest in the region. And uh, that's it, man. I'm here to help. Peace.